So first up is a sign permit application, 672 Main Street, New Mac Renaissance. How are you doing? I'm Kevin Childs from Madison Design. We're the ones uh, on behalf of John Magazo and Remax Renaissance. I'm not sure quite where to stand here, Ron. That's fine. Sit down. Yeah. Uh, we're requesting an awning. Uh, signage is a little bit difficult. I put, actually put together a little piece to show you people. You can see. We've got a sign next here, Cafe Nero. You really can't see their sign, so we didn't ask for a sign here, so we're just looking to get the same awning up. And above the door here, we're going to put um, just a small signage above the door so you can see it. We neglected not to put it above there just because it would be senseless, you can't see. So, so you're going to stop the awning short of the door? Yes. Yeah, so basically, I think we have a sign here. We were coming right up over here. We are stopping in front of the door. It's just an all-black awning, a yes, umbrella with steel construction, uh, very similar with the same dimensions as next to it. We used Cafe Nero as the protrusion as far as height, rise, and run. And I think it's, well, we can show it's going about 18 feet. It's going to block your sign. Uh, no, the sign is going to do, if you, I'm not sure if he's here, but if you see the next one, we'll switch to the next one. Right, but from... From southbound, from northbound. The, the, the tree blocks it, anyways. You can't see with the tree. You won't see it until you're straight in front of it. Correct. Stupid. That's my comment for today. Doesn't mean I want to prove it. I'm just saying it's stupid. <laughs> it's a stupid design. A symmetrical facade. Let's try to use nicer language, Nick. It's so stupid. <laughs> Let's just say he could get a bigger bang for his buck. I don't know even using the even, even using the it. awning. We're, we're not allowing any. You absolutely in. cannot see the awning. Yeah. What we did is we took videos from every which way to try to find out, and this was yeah. the best and non-invasive and trying to go with the signage. Who put that stupid tree in front of it? <laughs> Wait a minute! Um, I'm the tree I mean, police. You know. <laughs> I'll leave that one alone. That but what about also like a blade sign in addition to your ball sign? A blade sign. Yeah, you're a lot of blade signs. Out. Sticking out. We can stick a blade sign out. Then um, you would be able to see that from walking down the sidewalk, but then we put that no matter where we put it, you're just going to see it on the sidewalk alone. Or driving up to it yeah. from your you parking see it from area. north and south. And then you can still have the words on the awning if you want. And I believe what they're telling you is that you get an additional sign for a blade. You could have both. Really? Well, that would be great. Right. So would you put it on the left side of the awning? Correct. Which would be right over here. No, let's not start accumulating signs. Let's mm -hmm. smart about it. It's a two-sided sign, so you'd see it from both north yeah. and south. No, you wouldn't because the awning is going to block 90% of it. The awning will block it. it. Well, that's and and, and the, the, the tree is going to block it. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> There's, there's, there's no gain from the south side uh, on any, any... Bring the actual Big poster one. over. We're just trying to help you. Well, no, no, I, I, I searched around and I didn't know where it was going to go. Yeah, you, want to, you may want to maximize this somewhere. He's not allowed to have anything on the door itself? He's allowed a bit on the door, but nothing that's going to really show up from the street. And the, the, the door is set back, yeah. He's not allowed these two in this first window. It's more than a third. Mm -hmm. um, I really do appreciate putting the awning up, you know, because it'll continue that. But mm -hmm. that would block the blade sign if he put it over his doorway. But if you put his normal sign over the doorway, the one that he's applying for today, mm -hmm. and put a blade sign basically at the edge of the awning, just one-sided, pointing down, you would have a little bit of visibility from heading north. We'll have a wall sign, an awning, and a blade sign. It just seems like it's really going to... The fit. awning isn't a sign. No, no, no. All right. You know what? I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I meant it's getting busy. It's a 25-foot it's a yeah. facade, and it's going to have four elements on it. It just gets kind of busy. I'm just yeah. trying to figure out a way to make it more visible than just a flat sign. Um, you know, there's a business up the street that put a... Freestanding sign parallel to the face of their building on Main Street, right? 
Oh, you you're, 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 you're talking about doyens? No, 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 it's a smaller one. Anyways, yeah. Oh, they should have turned at 90 degrees. The one across from Burger King? There's probably a yeah. few examples, actually. Yeah, it's a Century 21 building, right? Is that what it is? That one of the challenges with this building is it's set back from the street and there's several trees in there and there's lights in there. So as we did a drive-by, we thought that this would be the most economic and non invasive for the town. And with yeah, the we, we wanted to dress up the, the, the front first of all. Yeah. So we, 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 the, the, the awning is more to keep people dry. Yeah. And, you know, keep the sideway clear in the winter time and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, there's, there's really no good place to put signage except on the windows, truthfully. So that's the the only only place in that whole facade that that would get visibility. Yeah. And I want to say they're allowed one third within the windows, correct? Thirty percent. Thirty percent. Not to exceed six six, six feet, square feet. feet. Yeah. So. Now that's something that I know he's looking at that we probably do later if uh, we can get a permit for that. Or that is a matter of right. The gooseneck sign, the gooseneck light, is that proposed with the signage? Yes, it is. So. My only other question is in the findings on the proposed certificate of appropriateness. Uh, there is a depth assigned to the awning of two feet. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And, and to me, two feet just seemed, I'm assuming depth being out from the building. Correct. Two feet from the building. Okay. Yeah. That matches the That matches the cafe. Two, two inches, okay. not two feet. Oh, I'm sorry. Which one are you oh. talking about? Awning. The awning. Will oh, the project. awning. The awning. The awning. Not, not, not the, not the, not the sign. Not the two sign. Feet no. High, two feet out. Correct. And okay. it has a six foot, uh, six inch face on it, and there's no writing on it. Okay. The actual sign itself will be projected about two inches. So okay. the point of having an awning is to keep people out of the rain, and yet over the door you have no awning. Well, because the door sets back about three feet, okay. so you can walk yeah. into the door. So you do have people undercover there. Correct. Okay. Thanks for my sign. Okay. I would have loved to have it all the way over to Cafe Nero sign, but then I'd have no place for a sign. I just want to continue the theme of the Cafe Nero. No, no, I. I understand that it's in the gooseneck but is the same same as Venetian Moon and Cafe Nero, so it continued that theme there also. Is there a street light right in front of you? Yes. It's actually just to the left of my space. You can't see. <laughs> well, if you can't see that you have bigger problems. Yeah. <laughs> just just to the left. for your wall sign? For the wall sign? Hold on a Is going to be half inch PVC overland with digital graphics on top of it. Sorry, can you say that one more time? It's a uh, half inch PVC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
the specification. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. There should also be a spec sheet in there for the boost deck as well. And I think uh, Andrew has uh, a sample of the umbrella material. Huge people with that. Pam? Yes. The umbrella on the material. Mm -hmm. I'll hold up, Vincent. Not okay. You're not going to light up the. No. We're not requesting any lighting underneath. Let's get your back. Okay. It's a shame this can't be down in the door space here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No, not the door. It could be above it. So? Oh, stupid. <laughs> because you have this uh, Art Deco building, right, that's got these symmetrical components, and symmetrical modules for each of the storefronts, and then Cafe Nero does have gooseneck signs, but their sign is sort of symmetrically located, so the goosenecks are symmetrical on that, too. This, this is going to have an offset sign, an offset light, not the awning blocks from one side. I mean, the first pilaster on the south side is completely open from the tree. That could be a blade sign. Mm -hmm. Pilaster on the left. What are you talking about here? All left. All the way left. Well, your left. Your other left. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's free. Yeah. It's got good visibility. But you're saying that eliminating the awning would give him better. No, I don't want to eliminate the awning. No, I'm no, just no. saying if you put a blade sign there on that end, uh, so I guess the awning's blocking it, right? Yeah. There. I'm not See, with the blade sign at that point, because the way that the street protrudes and comes out, you really wouldn't be able to see it unless you're coming out of, I'm not sure, that street where CBS is and looking left because you can't see. The uh, alleyway between the buildings. And the it's, it stagnates a little bit out. So even if you put a blade, what's the most protrusion you can do with a blade sign? Four Two, feet. Excuse me? Four feet. Can we request this sign and then uh, maybe put a blade sign if you want to come back? Do you want to review the blade sign or do you want to just roll it into this, like a future blade sign? We would just do an administrative approval. It can't be any worse. So, yeah, you could do it. For signs, it's to be balanced. Yep. All right. That way you wouldn't have to come back to this yeah. commission if you mm -hmm. came in with a blade sign. Yeah, you sign. could just apply for it. Yeah. Okay. And we would just review it and chat with you. Okay. Is I know he's uh, looking Lock to off. open and have a grand yeah. opening. We'd like to have the signage up by the end of this month. You can so. have a grand opening sign. Okay. Just figure out what the rules are. There's like so we're, we're planning a, a big event for September 7th, the day before s street fair, mm -hmm. and we'll be out, out there in full force on street fair. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Can you just, uh, well, we can start to have, you have that PVC with the yep. Yep. reference. I also have, uh, if you need, I can set a chair. We have another copy here. That's okay. We got one. That's good. I thought we just put it. So you said four, four feet out, how high? It's to be, you have to have a clearance of eight feet above the sidewalk, so the bottom of the projecting sign has to be at least eight feet. And what's going the actual height of the sign be? Um, it's limited in the square foot of the sign. Right. We, uh, we can touch base with yeah, you. Yeah, I'll touch with you tomorrow. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, and you've been great with that. And there's a bunch on the, on that side of the Yeah. Yeah. You can see a bunch of them that are already in place. Uh, get a sense for what they would like it on. Is it restricted on color and use the red, white, and blue theme? Um, no. There's some guidelines that we threw out there. You know, we like 
graphics more than words sometimes. Yeah. Um, so if you have a really recognizable graphic logo, you could use no words if you wanted to. Which is very familiar anyway. Would we be able to take that sign and cut it in, in the same shape it is, have it mitered to that sign out there, as long as it conforms to the square footage, the eight feet height and the four feet protrusion? Like you're talking about using your wall sign design like also as your blade sign? Correct. Well, no, as thing. long as it meets our bylaw mm -hmm. specs or right. requirements of okay. the The calculation for the square feet in this case would be uh, the square around the sign, including the white space. Yeah, you wouldn't get much bigger than that anyways. That's, yeah. a, that's a pretty good size there. Yeah. Trying to think of as good ones. Um, the uh, bookstore. The bookstore have one? Yeah, and then down the street on Haven, um, the bakery, not the bakery. Apple Moose? Apple Moose, don't mm -hmm. they have a big graphic? Yeah. 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 Something so there's, there's several examples. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, looking. They're good for foot traffic for sure. Okay. Can we get a motion to prove this particular appropriateness? Um, All right. I make a motion okay. to approve the certificate appropriateness for 672 Main Street as amended. I'll add a condition for an admin approval for a future blade sign. Yes, yes thank you. Specs for the wall sign. A second. All in favor? Thank you for the trees, even though you had to put up with my sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. All right, thanks again. Sure. I appreciate no it. Problem. The problem is you have a piece. I have one. That's probably one of the things that always survived, too. Oh, that's already No, thank you. <laughs> that, that quarter piece was a cheat. <laughs> Good so we have three sets of minutes that you guys can look at. Fill the gap between now and 8 o'clock. Um, May 13th, June 10th, and July 8th. Sorry, did you say condition for the wall sign? Yes. Good work. For those of you who just joined us, if you'll please sign in at the door and then you can help yourself to donuts in the back if you're interested. <laughs> sure. Okay. These are minutes we haven't seen yet. We yeah. haven't mm -hmm. had a comment. So I was checking here, unfortunately. Okay. We have not. So we had a 745 item here for 107 Main Street Facilities Restaurant, um, and they have requested to continue to September 9th. So if you're here for that, we're going to be continuing that hearing uh, to September 9th at what? 7 7:30. Make a motion. Um, move to. Uh, Request a continuance to September 9th for Facilities Restaurant 107 Main Street to the 7th of, sorry, September 9th at 7 o'clock. 7.30. 7.30? Yep. Second. All in favor? Okay. So again, that's 
That's the 107 Main Street Facilities Restaurant hearing that's continued to September 9th. Next item on the agenda is the continued public hearing for Austin Prep. That's scheduled for 8 o'clock. By that clock, it will never happen. Mr. <laughs> 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 Latham's clock keeps running. Yeah. Uh, so there's six minutes, five minutes to go on that. Sorry. <laughs> Kelly, point of uh, information: that there be only three members tonight. Do all three members have to vote in the affirmative for virtually everything? Okay. It's not a majority of the sitting members, it's a majority of the board, which means all three members would have to vote. I believe Ms. Latham can clarify if that's true. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 signs are not allowed to be installed on the second floor of the building, isn't it? Above the second floor? Mm -hmm. Or it can be at the second floor? Above the... the Above the lowest the low of the second floor the windows. Lowest window sill? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. So they can't really... Can you just clarify that so that... Yeah. That there's no confusion if you're on somebody who wants... Oh. Where was that, Nick? Page two. Paragraph. Fourth oh, paragraph I see. Right. Sentence. Okay. Sorry.
Um, it's 8 o'clock, so we can continue the public hearing for site plan review application 101 Willow Street, Austin Prep. So, um, Julie, do you have updates or do you want the applicants to update us on where we are? Why don't they update you? Okay. So basically, we had a, a site walk with the Conservation Commission. Uh, they came out, they walked around the site. Uh, we had conversations, very candid conversations with them about that. Then we basically had a meeting uh, last week with uh, two members of the board and internal staff. Um, that was a productive meeting as well. And we've got feedback from um, the Conservation Commission and uh, also from Conservation Administrator Chuck uh, Troni. So basically we've utilized that. Yes, sir. Could you just speak up a little bit more, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. So um, basically, um, we had that meeting uh, last week and it was very productive. We have a memo uh, that's been produced by uh, Conservation Administrator Chuck Taroni um, and um, we're basically working towards that and we believe that um, we're in a good spot at this point. We've incorporated a lot of revisions and, and plans, you know, changes that they that they wanted and um, we think we have a uh, a way forward with Conservation Commission and we're also still working with the town in regards to some of the uh, riverfront issues. So um, with that being said, um, in terms of the height of the, of the lights, the light poles, and the adjustment of the light fixtures, uh, Conservation has taken a look at that and basically we've provided tonight with an updated photometric plan. I don't know if um, you folks have actually received it yet, but it does. by email. Uh, 6.30, yeah. yeah. So it, it actually reduces, uh, at conservation's request, it actually reduces uh, light that goes into the, the wetlands and it keeps substantially all of the light within the boundaries of the property itself. So um, that's one of the, the major adjustments that, that we've been dealing with over the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, so with that being said, um, I'll turn it over to Chris for any other details or questions you may have? For the record, uh, Chris Huntress with Huntress Sports. Um, I do apologize, Julie, for sending that over late. We did submit an updated photometric plan a week or more ago uh, that you have in your hand there. Uh, at the meeting with Conservation last week, they had asked if there were any ways to um, better or improve the spill and glare into the wetland areas. We had kind of targeted the neighbors um, along Causeway and the neighbors along uh, MBTA is sensitive abutters when we reviewed this with our electrical engineer and, and lighting specialist. Um, I admittedly had not targeted the wetlands as a sensitive receptor, so um, we did that. And with the revised plan that we've submitted uh, today, we reduced the photometrics for the, the foot candle readings in the wetland areas by about half of what they are now. We moved one light fixture and, and then adjusted and re-aimed so I've got some hard copies. Um, I can leave with you guys. These are worthless. Um, the old ones we have. They have been revised. There are three copies here. I'm happy to leave them with you. Are these dated? Are they dated? Yes. So that we can check and see whether what we have is dated also? Uh, these are brand new. We really just printed in the last hour or something. Um, but the only change is really um, the seven or eight numbers within the wetland area. If you recall at the last meeting, there was a there was some confusion because there was option A and option B, and the property lines were not shown uh, accurately on one of them. What we did was we went back to uh, Musco. We got the photometrics delivered to us in AutoCAD so we could drop them into our files, throw everything to the correct property line, and, uh, and reformat the plan so they were a little larger and more legible than, than what you had in front of you last time. So um, the change uh, is really just to polls uh, C2, which is right down on the bottom of your sheet. Um, right where you've got your hand now. 
and uh, and some of the photometrics that were below that with regard to you know projecting the Can you just could you just point to where the wetlands are, Andrew? Or, or, uh, is this the update? Yeah, can you zoom out so we can see the whole plan and yep. show us the area we're talking about? Okay, so here's a causeway coming across the baseball field. Pole C2 is this one here, and this is the one that we moved one fixture from C2 uh, over to D1, and then we re-aimed the fixtures, and I would say all the, all the numbers within this range dropped about in half uh, from what they were before, which was a target that we told the Conservation Commission last week that we felt we could achieve, um, and they seemed pleased with that. Um, so that uh, is really the only change on the plan that you see submitted now. The plan that we submitted last week in this plan um, all include the 90-foot poles. There are some that are 90 and some that are 80. Um, but the taller poles did allow for better spill and glare control into adjacent properties, uh, being the residential abutters on Conway and on the MBTA. We did see some reduced uh, foot candles uh, beyond the property lines. That's because when you put the poles up slightly higher, you can angle the fixtures uh, more straight down so that you can better control those. Um, so I think when we discussed a couple options last time we were in front of you, you asked us to review and come back with the one that we'd like to move forward with. It's the one that we've shared with conservation. They seem to like that as well, so that's the one that we'd like to bring forward. The other minor changes um, that were made to the plan, and we may have touched upon this last week, there was a uh, six-foot solid board fence along the, uh, between the abutters on um, Causeway and the tennis courts. That was asked to be extended to the next adjacent property line. That's been done. We reduced some of the wall heights within the tennis court area from about 10 feet to six and a half feet uh, to try and minimize the, again, the height and still try and best control uh, any cutting that we have in there. Uh, I think that's the majority of the, of the changes uh, in the last time we were okay. And it looks like you, even though you've made that change to the lighting to, to um, for less impact in the wetland, it still looks like you're at zero on causeway. So it's not like you've been asked to make a change to protect the wetlands to the detriment of the... No, protecting the wetland issues didn't have any sacrifice to the abutters. It was really just moving one fixture and re-aiming a few. Uh, you know, admittedly, it was my fault for not having told the photometric guys that the wetlands were as sensitive as the neighbors. So they hadn't looked at that the way they did in the flooding property line. So I made sure that, that was clear. The other thing that I think Chris may have mentioned too, we did on August 1st receive a letter uh, from Ryan Percival with, with regard to the drainage review. And I've always got a couple minor questions I would consider them very minor. Uh, and overall, I think his comment was, was that drainage design appears to be more than adequate in doing almost entirely the 25 year storm. And, and goes on from there. So um, I think we're pretty well buttoned up on that front, too. Any questions about the site plan or, or where we are to date on design? Well, no, I just want to make sure I'm reading it right. So on the photometric plan, there is spillage over into some of the properties that are on causeway, correct? There is. Okay. And the worst case scenario, it looks like a 0.3? Mm-hmm. Okay. You see the darker of the two lines there is the property line, and then you see the setback on the first wall. And so one of the, right about where your finger was there, that uh, property line, um, goes through the abutting yard, you'll see that some of the yard actually moves towards the some encroachment from the neighborhood. Yeah. Okay. So can you show us where is the point three? Can you show it like for everybody? <coughs> where the hand is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you said that's the worst case scenario on that side. Yeah, we're point one Seven here, point right one. Up. Yeah. Point three, we're point seven on the line here. I mean, there's a point six, but again, this is not. This doesn't consider the tree line, right? That's correct. This um, this photometric analysis does not consider anything that projects up above the topography um, because it's very difficult for them to do that. So. Right, right. So it's it could be that in the when the foliage is down, but it'll probably be less than that when the. When I think the, I think this is clearly a worst case scenario. When as the vegetation. And I'll ask a stupid question. 
it's a baseball field and a soccer field, so I am assuming that it will not be used, or the plan is not to use it in the winter. Correct. Yes, that's the athletic director back there. Yeah. Okay. So the time period when there would be less foliage is minimized. Correct. Okay. Any other questions? And I'll hand it back to our council. That's your understanding of uh, Brian's, Brian's concerns. Yeah. Sorry. Second. That's your understanding of the town engineer's concerns that there really aren't any. Yes. Okay. That's correct. two big things and you're still kind of working way through, way through conservation oh yeah that's that's going to be a work in progress but we were hoping tonight to try to move forward with cpdc uh, so we can try to get a decision tonight right and it's our understanding that that's that, that their position is that there won't be any significant changes right here <coughs> So I think we'll just condition that, you know, you have to get through their, um, through their process. Yes, sir. Um, okay. All right, any other questions or comments from the board? All right, we'll take some public comments. Make sure you've signed in in the back, please, and state your name and address. And Let's see if we can get through these quickly. So for the record, I'm Steve Chapman, 66 Causeway Road in Abutta, uh, near the tennis courts. I have one question and then a couple of comments for consideration by the, uh, the, the board. My one question is to the applicant, and I should have thought of this last time, but in thinking about when the tennis court lights or the stadium lights go out at 9.30, it's on a switch. What will be on the field and the courts for security lighting? So that the players that might be there are able to get off the field and find their way back up to the parking lot. I'd be happy to answer that. Um, so there are pedestrian lights as well um, that are lower. They're about a 12 foot mounting height that surround the balance of the, the baseball field, but also the sports lights. Um, you might call it a switch, but it's actually on a, it's on a timer, which is a programmed event uh, that's done online and is programmed to go on and off at certain times. But when they go off, there'll be a 15 minute where they go down to about half power I so see. that everybody can leave the field and then they go off entirely after that. I know I've been on the town courts when the lights go out and we're scrambling trying to find the balls because it's so dark. <laughs> it's a good point. It's a long way out back there. So. And a couple of comments for the board. Um, in the findings, item number one, it referenced that the existing fields consist of two baseball fields and two soccer fields. I just wanted to ask or suggest that that might be stated a little differently to say that it's on common land, because the way it reads, you could almost take that to be four separate fields on that property. So it's in a, a common use or a shared use. And I asked my question about the, the security lighting and the after hours lighting. And I guess it was a point of disappointment and want to know how it came to the decision that it's now 6 a.m. for use of the fields by the school. At the last meeting, we heard 6.30. The neighbors had requested that it be later, given that even construction equipment is not allowed to work until 7. I think there's a bylaw that doesn't even allow trash pickup until 6.30. Yet here, trash pickup is a one-time noise of collection. And here there's going to be the sound of play and baseballs and everything else starting at 6 in the morning. And I just question why it came to 6 o'clock. That seems awfully early. 6.30 is fine. It's 6.30 for rental events. But 6 for school events. Well, athletic events. 
Um, that, well, yeah. Yeah. Used the, by. Just the reason I raise it is the Dover Amendment, obviously for schools and for religious. But other than that, absolutely athletic. Yes, 6:30. We're agreeable to. Thank you. Okay, I'll just go on the record that I still think that's too early for disrupting the neighbors. But that's my comment. And my final comment is under your conditions, and you talk about point one prior to the start of contained, and there's no mention there of the order of conditions from Conservation Commission. So those are just my suggestions for your draft. Uh, 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 that in. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. To that point, I was actually going to add a, under general conditions, a third condition regarding um, ongoing compliance with the order of conditions which is a, a condition that I have usually in these decisions when there is a Conservation Commission decision as well. So I'm going to comply with the order. Yeah. Um, some, some standard language I have to that effect. Okay. Is there any objection to that, Mr. Lake? No. Did you say you wanted to change the hours to 6.30? Yes, sir. That's fine. Julie, this this um, decision under lighting number seven that matches the latest. Okay, well, I don't know about that. that. Yeah. I have to check. Seven sports lighting fixtures. Um, proposed in a multi-purpose field, and another eight sports lighting fixtures have been proposed within the tennis court area. Is that correct? Yes. Well, we'll verify that as well. I know. I guess we're going to be specific like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can we be adding in at that point the maximum height? I would just say what's on the drawing. So it could be credible. Okay. You could say which will vary in height as shown on that drawing. Something okay. Like that. Yeah. Not that it would ever happen, but if somebody accidentally put in a 100 foot pole versus 90 foot. Who's going to measure it? Yeah. <laughs> person writing the check would know. They also might need to read another <laughs> Person writing the check doesn't care. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, any public comments? Here. You can say like so moved. No. Nope. So moved. Okay, second. Second. Okay, all in favor of closing the public hearing? So you've seen this decision and worked your way through it. Yes, sir. Materials include this last photo mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, we'll put that in. And this to the patent on materials submitted. Is that what we would like? Um, I'd probably revise it under F, the revised date. Yeah. Revised date. Yeah.
Six-foot fence doesn't really talk about. It just talks about roughly where it's located, you know, on the southerly, southwesterly property line and northeast property line. But it's going to go based on this plan. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. site plan. Mm -hmm. Show me. I do that, and then I don't Which know. Which plan are you specifically looking at? Um, Shown on one. Mr. Chairman, if I, if I may, I don't recall the sheet number, but the fence has been extended, but the arrow saying start of fence hadn't moved. That's a minor detail, but I, I did pick that up. I know the intent is to bring it to the property line. I don't have any other comments on this one. Tony? Mm -hmm. um, just confirming, there are no restroom facilities in this project at this point, correct? Okay. 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 motion to Barring no other comments from the applicant or staff, I get a motion to um, approve the site plan decision. Thank you. Might need to approve the waivers. Uh, oh, yeah, there is one waiver. For the traffic. the traffic. Oh, the traffic. Okay. okay, do that first thing. Yes. A motion to approve waiver on site plan decision Q of traffic study for 101 Willow Street, Austin Preparatory School. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? And approving the waiver. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to on the one. Motion to approve the site plan decision uh, for 101 Willow Street, Austin Preparatory School, dated August 12th, 2019, as amended. Second. All in favor? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Donuts on the way out. If you like. <laughs> That's for everyone in the room. Thank you. Thank you. The first one is free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, are there any other continuances? There are yes, what time is it? Twenty-three. Okay. So we have a request to continue the public hearing. Uh, sorry, to yeah, continue the application to 135, 139, and 149 R Howard Street Infrastructure Holdings LLC has requested a continuance to September 9th. Amen. Yes. Yes. 7:45 p.m. A motion to continue in Howard Street R to September 9th, 7.45 p.m. Second. Second. All in favor? Okay. We have another one, it looks like. We have a request to continue the 258-262 Main Street Reading CRE Ventures uh, public hearing to September 9th. Would that be 8 o'clock? Yep. Mm -hmm. Motion to continue. 258-262 Main Street to September 9th, 8 p.m. Second. So that's you, I believe, right? You need butters for that? So it looks like they've requested to continue. They might be here for the zoning discussion. 
It's not scary. Maybe. No, I'm just saying. But okay. I re recall that they lived next to the uh, property. Yes, and we are here for the, the next one. Yeah. All right. So that was scheduled for 815. So we can move forward with this. Um, so we have a continued public hearing for ZBL amendments for November town meeting. We've got a mixed use regulations and we have some other changes to footnote one for table 5.3, and table 5.3.1, and table 5.3.2. Move what to do first. We will start with the mixed use and the intensity regulations, which will impact um, the business A and business C zoning districts, which are along Main Street and then where Reading Woods is. And did you all get a chance to sign in at the front? Okay, that's great. All right, next to So, um, give me the copies we have so you can the extras. So I made a few changes based on our conversation on July 8th and then also based on the feedback I received from the select board when I presented the changes to or the zoning bylaw amendments to them on July 9th. Um, so we'll just, I, I called out in this version like the things that I added since the last time we talked about them. Um, Did you, did anyone get a chance to look at the changes I made? Or should I go through them one by one? Can you go through them? Can you characterize what the changes are generally so people understand what it is we're trying to do? Yeah, sure. So um, in general, what we're trying to do here um, is to expressly allow mixed use projects in the business A zoning district, which there's stretches of business A along both sides of Main Street, um, especially in the southern portion of town. Um, so what we're proposing is to create a definition for mixed use, which, which is a project that would include a commercial component and a residential component, and then establish um, a process for it, which would be a special, pro a special permit process with this commission, um, which means that all abutters within 300 feet of the project would be notified, um, and we'd have a public hearing process similar to the one that you've been involved in um, with the 258 Main Street project. And then we would also have regulations for what it is that we want to see in the mixed use projects. Um, so that's the general overview of what we're proposing here with these changes. Um, and we have, the CPDC has talked about these changes and um, since last December, I believe. It's been on many agendas. Um, and then the hearing for these changes actually, the official public hearing actually started in June. Um, and so there, there have been many iterations of this, these documents, and they're all on the town's website. Um, and I'm happy to, if you don't get what you want to get out of this meeting or don't understand something, you can always follow up with us in the office to understand more about what this really means. Because um, zoning is not something that people talk about every day, usually, except for us. <laughs> so it can be a little bit uh, nuanced. And um, anyway. So, maybe we should just go through. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll just go quickly through the document and I'll kind of like, like give an overview of what each section is about. Um, is this big enough or should I blow it up a little more? Is this good? Okay. Um, so, let's see, where are we? So at the very top on the first page, we have our definition of mixed use. Um, 
which is the combination of two or more permitted principal uses from different principal use categories in the table of uses, one of which is a residential use within a structure or project. So that's just how we're, how we're defining it, um, and it includes a residential component. And those uses are already permitted in the area. Right. So that in our bylaw, we allow multifamily and we allow commercial, and says they can't be in the same building. But we make the multifamily component actually very hard to implement because we have some specific dimensional requirements for the multifamily piece that make the actual realization of a multifamily component of a mixed-use project quite difficult. So what we're doing instead is creating a separate, ca like a separate definition for mixed use, and we're creating provisions and regulations um, that will more or less incentivize what it is that we would like to see, rather than disincentivizing what it is that maybe prior commissions or prior town staff didn't want. Um, that clear. I don't know if that's clear or not, but. Um, Basically, carrot and stick. We're, we're trying to get a little more commercial on our commercial corridor. Right. Because that's better for us. Um, and so the only way to do that really is to maybe offer these mixed use opportunities to developers. Right. Because housing is what's kind of driving the, the real estate market right now. So we are cognizant of the fact that if we build in a housing, allow developers to build in a housing component to their projects, we might see some better redevelopments along South Main Street. Um, so, just go down. So, so the first thing that we did is we created the definition and then we inserted it into the table of principal uses. And we say in this table like what the process is. Um, so in business A and business C, you can do mixed use um, through a special permit process with this commission. In all of the other districts in town, we currently don't allow it. So that's what this means. Okay. And then here's this and it's in different colors because we've, like I mentioned, we've gone through many different versions of this document. So we've edited it and we've added things and we've subtracted things and reworded things. Um, but basically these are the regulations that, we've, that we're trying to promulgate around what these mixed use projects would look like. Um, and so we talk about, you know, the locations of the uses and we like to see commercial on the first floor and residential above, but if you had a site that was big enough and you had multiple buildings, you could have commercial in the building along Main Street and then maybe residential in, in the back building. We're trying to add a little flexibility about how these things um, are realized. Um, let's see. And then we make a mention of the South Main Street design best practices as well, which I don't know if you're aware of, but they're design guidelines basically that we give to all developers proposing projects along um, South Main Street and they exist outside of the zoning bylaw and they're kind of like um, you know planning principles that we that we strive for with every project along there um, okay. and so we have a section where we talk about the dimensional requirements um, so essentially like when you're looking at a mixed use building or a project, like how close it can be to the front, to the side, and to the rear, um, and how much of the um, lot it can take up. Um, and so what we're allowing is um, a zero setback from, from the main street. So the building could be as right up against the sidewalk um, along main street, which, would, which could mean that it's further from an abutter to the rear. Can you explain B? I'm confused. B. Okay. Um, yeah, sure. So this is to encourage, um, like, t if you had two commercial properties next door and they got together and they had an agreement to share their parking between them. So, like, if one was a bank that was, you know, closed after the hour, at, at 5 p.m. every night and the next one was a restaurant next door, the restaurant could <coughs> use the bank's parking and so they wouldn't have to build all their own parking on their own site. Um, and so, so we have things like that kind of built in the regulations, like if a mixed use project can establish like a permanent shared parking arrangement, there might be some flexibility on some other measure of the project. So in this case, we're saying um, the property that um, 
it has the agreement with, you know, maybe we would allow it to be as right up against the lot line with that property that it has the agreement with, um, something like that. Of course, with the, you know, discussion with the sport and negotiation with the property owner, all that. Um, and then we talk about the commercial component of the mixed use project and we went back and forth on this about how much of the building's floor area should be devoted to commercial um, and this commission feels very strongly that it should not be less than 25% of the gross floor area of the structure because this is a, our primary commercial district in town. Um, and we'll get resistance to that yeah. right through because they'll always cry foul, you know, that they can't do it, we can't do this, we can't do this, but resistance from who? They can do this. Developers, um, because housing is really what's hot right now, mm -hmm. um, and there is a lot of commercial vacancy in the area, um, it's hard to find commercial tenants, it's hard to fit enough parking to, you know, attract commercial tenants, there's a lot of things baked into it that make it, can make it challenging. So we've heard from some developers that, you know, 25% is actually quite high of a requirement for commercial, but like, we don't, we would prefer for one of our primary commercial districts in town to not just completely turn into all housing. Um, so we're kind of staying firm on this one. And then here again is another clause at the bottom here where we're saying, okay, if you can provide space for exist existing commercial tenants that are already on your site. So if you redevelop, but you bring existing commercial tenants back into your space, that this um, commission would um, give favorable consideration to requests for waivers on other metrics and other aspects of the design. Um. Yeah, the, the benefit to the special permit process is that there's more negotiating power from the town side. I, I mean power, not like power hungry power, but zoning really doesn't allow the town much control. You know, we can't tell somebody how their buildings can look. So South Main Street has guidelines, but they're they're not really enforceable. And, right. You know, they're recommended. Whereas downtown, there's a different mechanism where we can enforce some of the guidelines. So the special permit process is a better negotiating tool. You know, if you do this, which is a better development, we can let you have that, which has no impact or has low impact. Right. And it's all a negotiation. And then, of course, you know, abutters will be notified for the special permit process. So, like you would be in the audience and you would hear these negotiations and you would be given a chance to weigh in on what you think about them. Um, so then here we talk about the residential component um, and we are asking that residential units be located at the rear of a building or on upper floors only so that that first floor main street fronting commercial space is really used for commercial. Um, and then we talk about um, inclusionary zoning, which is zoning that requires a certain number of units to, to be um, eligible to families with incomes of 80% area median income um, or less. So that's otherwise known as affordable housing. Um, so to, to maintain pace with our you know, subsidized housing inventory and state requirements for affordable housing, we are trying to require that projects of 10 or more units um, have at least one that is available at an affordable rate. Um, so that's another thing like with these regulations. We can incentivize some things, but and then we can make sure we include other things that are good for the town. Um, you control how high they build though. Yeah, and so we'll, I'll get to that. Um, there's a table of dimensional controls that includes height, so um, we'll get to that. How does age-restricted housing fall into that? Um, I'll have to look into it so I don't misspeak. Okay. <coughs> I don't know yeah. exactly the mechanism for that. There is a mechanism, yeah. but I don't want to misspeak, so I'll have okay. to just make a note. know that because that's another need. Yeah. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. None of the age-restricted units at Reading Woods are affordable. Right, but we had the entire 202 units on the other side. Right, right. that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And then here again, we have a provision that the CPDC can waive or allow flexibility for other aspects of the project if a developer comes in and proposes more than 10% affordable units or units that are affordable at, you know, to, to um, at an e even deeper level. So like a 50% of area median income or something like that. So we're trying to create a depth and breadth of housing stock. Um, do you have a question? No, Kevin Breer, Greystone Way. Um, I actually just had a question about the amendments that you were making to the HUD. So you say right there, a minimum of 10% of units, I think, or one, is that what I heard? But um, like our townhouses is 10 units and we have, I think, three affordable housings. Are the current regulations as such that like that unit is always going to be low income designation as opposed to like let's say that they sell it or they want to resell and then like right. can that flip to now not be that way? So it depends on how the deed uh, rider is written and the, the deed restriction is written for that property. Um, nowadays when we create affordable housing we require that the deed rider be in perpetuity so that units that are affordable today aren't lost 30 years from now. Um, but some of the older affordable units like have you know limits on them and can expire after a certain number of years. When you say deed, you mean specific to that unit? So yeah, you not know, not like the HOA bylaws. So the overall project has a regulatory agreement and a, and, a, and deed writer, and then each unit has its own deed restriction, um, and typically you know they're they're uniform across the board for a development. Um, okay. And then this, so what we're proposing here is not modifying anything that's coming down from the Department of Housing and Urban Development or even from the state. We're actually with what the state parameters are. Right. So now we talk about parking. Um, we have parking for residential units provided at a minimum ratio of 1.25 spaces per unit. And then parking for the commercial uses provided at a minimum ratio of one per 300 square feet. Um, and then again, we say shared parking arrangements between sites are encouraged for commercial uses. And then we have some things that from a planning perspective, we like to see like um, a certain percentage of the spaces can be compact spaces for smaller cars. Um, that's also can be good for design engineers because if they can design some spaces that are smaller, they might be able to fit more overall parking on their site. Um, and then we asked for a comprehensive parking plan um, that shows how the proposed parking will be sufficient for the different uses and how they'll work together and be managed. Um, so for a mixed use project, you might have some that are allocated to residential and some that are allocated to commercial and there would need to be management so that there wasn't a misunderstanding of how they were supposed to be used. Um, all right. And then I added this since our last discussion on um, provisions for bicycle parking. We probably have something about this in, in the design guidelines. I think so. Okay. That's John's time. But, like, like why not? Just put it in here. Right. Um, and then I added a, sec a, a little paragraph here about um, a project that provides an electric vehicle charging station or accommodations for car sharing or one or more spaces for app rides like Uber and Lyft, um, like drop-off spaces, um, could be given favorable consideration on requests for waivers or other aspects of the project. And that's something that you guys will have to decide if you like the language or not. Um, the select board chair um, requested that we make provisions for electric vehicles. So. And then we get into loading. Um, so we don't want any trucks to be loading and unloading off of Main Street. So, sorry, right on Main Street, like parking there and blocking traffic. So we require that all loading has to take place on the site. Um, we also say that we don't want any loading being staged from side streets or residential streets. So like really it needs to be managed on the site. Um, And then we have some provisions for um, if an applicant can make a good case as to why they don't need a loading space, it's possible that um, they may not need to provide one. 
However, I do think we need to consider that deliveries are like really increasing, like grocery deliveries, um, Uber and Lyft drop-offs, Amazon deliveries. Like, there's there's definitely more deliveries, but a lot of them are being made with smaller vehicles now. Right. If you look at the Amazon fleet thing that they're Those working on, right? Those are smaller vehicles, yeah. and so it's possible they could have two loading spaces if they're small. Right. So that's just something we should talk about because we don't want to, we would want to make sure we have a provision for that somewhere on the site. Um, even if they make an argument that they don't need like a traditional 35 by 17 or whatever it is, loading space, like we should still try yeah. to accommodate I a smaller truck. I don't think that truck. could be something that can be weighed. Okay. I think it can be something that, that could be flexible. Uh, I think um, Gold Street has some flexible space like in the garage. That they could use. That's acceptable. But right. if we let them wave it, they'll try to wave it. Mm -hmm. right. And then they'll be parked on the street. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll re I'll work on this language. And then we're almost done with this section. In this section, we talk about curb cuts and driveways. So as you know, there are a lot of curb cuts currently um, on Main Street. And so we're trying to encourage you know, a developer to have a curb cut off of a side street. So have an entrance into the project, if they're on a corner, be from a side street um, rather than off of Main Street, um, where feasible. Um, it's not always feasible. Um, and then also a connection between, like I was talking about earlier, um, a connection from one site to the next, like an internal driveway connection if there's like a shared parking arrangement or just for future development so that someone can turn off of Main Street one time into one property and then drive through the side to the property next door if they want to get something there or even walk from property to property without having to go back out to Main Street to like leapfrog all down down the street. So these are just some visions that we have for, for the future of what we're thinking of for Main Street. Janet, Davidson D, Milepost Road. So what do you mean by feasible? I mean, because I live right there off Hopkins Street, and there's that nice little corner, and you wonder when Arrows is going to sell off. Um, and so, of course, by my view, it's not really feasible to have a lot of traffic coming off of Main Street and creating a side entrance, but so what is feasible? Uh, you know, yeah. because anybody living in that situation would say it's much preferable to me to leave the traffic on Main Street um, right. versus coming down a side street like that. Right. So, so maybe maybe we need a different word there. Well, again, that's a very good point that you bring up. Like feasible means right. different things to different people. It's right. I you know we're right. So really to it potentially on a development. Um, that's a pretty large site. Right. There's some flexibility there. If there was a residential component, perhaps the residential access is from the side street, and all of the commercial stuff is off the main street. Again, that's this imaginary site. I don't know all the parameters. Or you look at it and you say, all of it has to be off of main street because there's no way to make it work. Yeah. Whatever, whatever the safest, least impactful route is, I think you know, should be open. But I, I wouldn't imagine any of the commercial stuff going down the side streets. That would all have to come off Main Street. Right, and now... It's visible commercial right. sort. And the reality is right now that, you know, many of the commercial, most of the commercial sites on Main Street are accessed, on, like, on Main oh, Street. Well, yes. And, you know, the tendency is to, like, use the existing curb cut so you don't have to, like, deal with mass DOT to close it or to re, you know, rearrange it. So... It's just these yeah. things that think you do think of, obviously, of the location that's closest to your to your home, and you know as it is coming up Hopkins, you can only take a right onto Main Street. Um, it's reading something like no setbacks, no requirement, zero frontage on the sides or the front. That puts it right on potential. You know, again, look at your own situation, right there on the corner, and and right. um, just trying to keep up with what is written and what's being amended and understanding in a short right. time 
what the basic bylaws are and how we're really changing them right. is, is kind of a challenge. But, uh, that's a really, another really good point, though, by the way. Just because that says you may have something to the zero line, if the traffic study shows that the sight line is, is too short and doesn't work, they would that wouldn't be approved. And also there are driveway regulations. So for things coming off of our locally owned streets, you know, we have the engineering department has a number of driveway regulations that have to be met or an applicant has to actually get a waiver from the select board. So there's there's a little bit more to that process. Um, I guess it really is like, you know, where feasible. Um, so for example, the project that's being built where the Sunoco was right right down on Main Street, yes. uh, right next to 128 yes. Tire. <laughs> their entrance is off of Green Street. Mm -hmm. And their entrance is only, I think, like 46 feet from the, the intersection. And the driveway regulations require 50 feet. So they had to seek approval from the select board for that entrance to be 46 feet off of, away from the intersection. Um, so that was a scenario in which they were able to close the curb cut that was on Main Street so they could create, you know, they could pull their building right up to the sidewalk, create a nice commercial frontage, and then have the entrance, which is for their residential units above, off of Green Street. And what about the residents, or what was the residential impact on Green Street, to the people on Green Street? And there, there was a, a limited traffic study, I believe, done for that project, and um, there were some abutters at some of the hearings. Um, and then the yeah. did change Green Street, so that's right turn only. Right, mm -hmm. that's correct. So that helps to cut down the traffic, because now people are going to have to go around the long way if they're taking the left. So. Yeah. So there, there's always like that little, you know, trickle down impacts of things, and we do try to consider as many as we can. Um, so those are good questions. Thank you. Again, yeah, um, the special permit process, though, gets to deal with all right. of those. Rather than saying it's one or two, it could be three, it could be four. You know, if there's a solution the developer comes up with that we didn't think about um, that's feasible, that can be considered. And you would be there voicing your concerns, and we would listen to that and weigh that against you know, the plus and minus. You go and by and actually looked at that building by Snow, uh, Gary's 128, that new building. Mm -hmm. It's so close. close. Mm -hmm. If there was a crack in the building, I don't think you could fit down there to fix it. Close to what? They're close to each other. Close to what? The, the new tire. building is like right up against the lot oh, line, and so is 128 oh. tire. Yeah, right. well, how long is 128 tire going to be there? The building no, there, there are, they are definitely aware of how close it is. In fact, when they were building that building, they did go to 128 Tire and say, if we do our excavation, we know we're going to do some damage to your foundation, so how about if we fix it? So there's been a lot of negotiation and talking back and forth. I'm so just they're saying aware. it's so close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I know. I guess it's not your responsibility to make sure it can be, the building can be fixed, but common sense sometimes just doesn't apply. And people still go straight across and turn left. That they do. <laughs> <laughs> and every week there are police reports in the paper of traffic enforcement at Main. Main Street and Green. Yeah. No, and, and the other thing you have to consider is not only vehicles, vehicular traffic, pedestrian traffic, because there are a lot of people coming up all the way up. That's where they cross to go up to the train station. Mm -hmm. So, yep, we just don't want to make it any worse. Nice when we're getting the sidewalk back. Yes. Yes. In a back and better fashion than it was. Okay. Nicer. These are good changes, Julie. On Thank you. This, yeah. Very thoughtful. So where are we on this? We so open? We have to if, vote on this? Um, it's still open. The hearing's still open. But why don't we wait until we get through the intensity regulations, which relate to it. Um, did you have any other questions on the stuff we just went over? If you think of any questions, you can always call me. Um, so the next section is um, section six of our zoning bylaw, and it's the intensity regulations. And what we sought to update here were the ones that relate directly to the mixed use. Um, 
There's act and there are actually a couple of other things that we changed, so I'll just quickly go through. Um, this very beginning part, the language I added, is really just for clarification of, a pro of the process. Um, it's not, doesn't have a major consequence to anything. Um, and, and the changes here to the definition of lot shape are really just clarifications on something that we omitted um, last time it was updated. And that doesn't relate to the mixed use necessarily. Um, so these, um, section six exists in our bylaw and has these categories already like gross floor area, landscaped area, buildings per lot. And what I did is I went through to make sure that the things we were proposing for mixed use didn't directly conflict with anything that was already written in the bylaw. Um, so the changes I made here, um, in gross floor area, we have um, some requirements for multifamily dwellings. And so I wanted to clarify that it's for a multifamily dwelling that's not part of a mixed use project. So um, th the restrictions and provisions in the bylaw that relate just to multifamily projects will not apply to a multifamily component of a mixed use project, if that makes sense. Um, multifamily is allowed right now. And right. It has its own rules and we didn't want that multifamily to be mixed up into the multifamily of the new mixed use rules that were created. Right. And so in some ways, as I mentioned before, the regulations for multifamily, just multifamily, are a little bit hard to be real for developers to realize because there are some restrictions on them. And I think that the intent of that was because we really don't necessarily want entirely multifamily projects in our primary commercial corridor. So we're leaving that alone. Like we're we're not going to make multifamily any easier unless it's part of a mixed use project where we also get a commercial component. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm clarifying here that that's this relates to multifamily, but not that's not part of a mixed use project. Um, and so to that end, we also had to capitalize multifamily dwelling. So it's like its own thing, its own defined entity. Um, and then here we talk about gross floor area dedicated to commercial space. And again, this is ju just bringing this, I added this section in to, to, which matches the section where we talk about 25% of a, um, structure or a mixed use project has to be commercial. So this is just exactly the same as that other section. Um, and then again, we're excluding multifamily that's not part of a mixed use project here. Um, and um, under buildings per lot, we I added business A into the list in case there is a site where someone you know was able to put a number of sites together or like the Harrow's property is pretty large, like if they wanted to do more than one building, um, that would be okay. So add that in. And this is um, what you were asking about earlier, Lynn, this table here. So in the table of dimensional controls, the requirements for um, area frontage, front yard, side yard, rear yard, lot coverage, and building height depend on what it is that you're doing and in what zoning district. That's the way this is broken down. So um, we have category for a single and two family dwellings, for multifamily dwellings, uh, hotel, motel, other permitted uses, and I added a mixed use section in here. Um, what's important to note is that the dimensional controls that we put in for mixed use are not any worse or any um, more impactful, or not supposed to be any more impactful to abutters than something that's already allowed in the business A zoning district. So um, an example of that is um, the height. We're allowing 45 feet for a mixed use project. And right now, we allow a hotel or motel that's 45 feet. Um, and similarly with lot coverage, we're allowing up to 60% of the lot to be covered by buildings or structures, um, and a hotel or motel in business A could do the same thing. Um, 
And so you'll find if, when you look at this um, carefully that in every instance, with, with the one exception of the front yard setback, um, where we're allowing the building to be right up on Main Street, um, that's the only thing that, that's the only provision in this table that's like more flexible, let's say, than anything else that's currently in the table. Um, so for you, being a side yard abutter to a potential project, um, we have a provision here that allows a mixed-use project to go down to 10 feet, to as close as 10 feet to... Isn't it currently 10 feet? It's currently 10 feet for um, a, a single or two-family dwelling that would be next door to you. If you look at the table and you just go down required side yard, you can see anywhere you see a 10. Um, so a hotel or a motel in business A. So if you look, you know, over like this business A and down 10. Um, and other permitted principal use. So there's a lot of things in the use table that fit into that category. Um, and then, then it all has a footnote four. So let's scroll down and see what that specifies. Um, okay. So here we're saying um, if it's a mixed-use project on a corner lot, so a corner would, you know, you'd have your front, which would be Main Street, and then it might be a corner like, say, Pineville. So this, this side that's on Pineville could also go down to zero because that's a corner lot. So we would allow it to be right on the corner of that, right? So that's what this um, footnote is about. Um, and then we have the, the, the clause about a mixed-use project with a permanent shared parking arrangement also. Um, could have a zero setback from the abutting property it has the shared parking arrangement with. So I put that in here as well to be consistent. Now is that something that can be negotiated or that's pretty firm? So through the special permit process with this commission, almost any of these things can be negotiated. Yeah. And when we say may or can or it, that doesn't, it's not shall, right? So it means like they could propose it but it might not happen, or maybe they don't propose it. Maybe they're, they propose five feet because of, for some reason um, they want to put like landscaping in a picnic table or something. Which isn't five feet, it's not enough, but you know what I'm getting at. Um, could, could we make it 20 feet? <laughs> <laughs> so. And that's the basic gist of this. I think we're there. Um, And I didn't, I changed this since the last time, the intensity regulations changed since the last time we met, but not since I met with the select board. Um, very, very nice explanations, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions on those two sections? This next section is a different topic. Okay. You're welcome to stay, of course, for the next topic, but uh, absolutely. This topic has been known <laughs> to cause distress. Mental <laughs> distress, just to kind of wrap your head around. Yeah. Take a hint. Thank you. No, no, please stay if no, you no. want. Please stay if you Thank want. You. <laughs> Thanks, I think you have a copy of what we're talking about next. Yes. So if you yeah. look it over and you have any questions, you can always call me. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You sure. know I will. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I have to do that time. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Good job. Okay. Just got to do that at a town meeting. We noticed <laughs> 984 people received that notice. We received 13 inquiries, and we have five people here tonight. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, town meeting will be a little more difficult to get yeah. through. But I think you did a really good job. It's actually much clearer to me now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It has been in months. Right. Good. I'm so glad. <laughs> because we don't have all of the edits floating around. Right. Yeah. But you also stripped out some of the verbiage that just confused yeah, yeah. instead of just a this is the way it's going to be, unless. Right. right. Okay. 
Nice job. It's good practice. I, I wish town meeting were so far away. <laughs> yeah. Let me forget it all and then. There's a good question at the end there that almost anything can be negotiated. You have the tape. Julie? Yeah, it's true. The uses can't be negotiated. No. Yeah. And so that's important if somebody says, well, what can't be negotiated? Yeah. I've right. already established what the uses can be. Someone can't put well, the use categories can't be negotiated. Use. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Someone can't put a manure farm <laughs> on a right. business aid district. Right. 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 Skating rink, yes. Yeah, Sorry. it would be um single lane. Simple. It's funny because we did get some questions about whether when we sent out the courtesy notice to the abutters, like a number of people thought, Oh, there's gonna be a pool at Reading Woods. I was like, oh. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So we got a lot of we got some calls and we had similarly similar conversations over the phone and so we shall see. Um, did you want to go back to mixed use real quick and just talk about the things I added, um, the bicycle parking, the electric vehicle stuff? Do you have any problems with that language? I don't. I think they're mm -hmm. contemporary. Okay. Well conceived. Should we say at least one loading space should be provided per project? At least one? So that we can... I mean, it might not be a bad idea to, to say also, like, um, you know, to talk about the different dimensions of loading. Right. In there That's that what I was trying to have wonder to how to get a size. Um, Well, the loading management plan, unless any of the following criteria are met, I think we could. Sh there should be a, man a loading management plan, regardless. Okay. I think it that says we've got a restaurant. It's yeah. going to take a, an 18 wheeler once a week and then a bunch of box trucks. So if we require the loading management plan, that'll inform how many spaces and what size they might be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in no it, but in no case shall the loading space, parentheses, has like space says, be waived or overlooked. Well, it's only requiring one loading space per project. Yeah, I'm saying that. Um, a, yeah, combined, then a combined facility with a zero setback between the two buildings has a shared parking, has loading requirements for both of these. Elements potentially two might need two, right? Conflicting. Mm -hmm. Well, no, each project would need its own loading space. Step one that's C. Okay. Then, if one or both projects therefore had a loading management plan, you could then either okay. minimize it down to one to be shared between the two or. Good. Okay, nothing. so get rid of the unless any of the following criteria are met. Yep. Yeah. And then the next one, either D, a, a loading management plan shall be provided. That clearly describes how. Right? Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. no, because that was one of the problems that we saw that there were loading spaces for two units on that one that's, that was looking like a strip mall. But the last two on the right hand side of the building had no loading. You'd have to be delivering to the front door. Yeah. And that does happen in some places, and their management plan should identify that. So this is a front of the door, small box FedEx thing twice a day or something, or once in a right. while. Yeah. Uh, and some phone stores, right? They get. So we should probably get rid of the, per, the second part there. Um, or the proposed commercial spaces are limited for lease to tenants that do not require deliveries. Yeah. Because yeah. we really have a lot of residential deliveries. I mean, I was thinking about this at my property. There's 13 condos in my building, and like, that truck is like pulling up every, you know. Yeah. No, it, no, Twice it's like multiple times a day. It's like I get my sun basket delivery. I get my Amazon delivery. It's like, it's not, it's not just me. You know, rooftop four years full port. of boxes every day. Right. Yeah. Rooftop drone. Port. Well, that's next. <laughs> we have a loading wherever located, including aerial positions. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. So yeah, let's get rid of that. Yep. Okay. Um, and the describes additional requirements for loading, you know, something like that in there. Yeah. So basically we're getting the one, mm -hmm. and then potentially there's a management plan where, you know, 10 spaces are empty all day pretty much. They're getting loaded and out of that. Whatever. 
the, the plan will describe it and we'll work through it. Great. Great. And then, um, do you think we need a different word for feasible, or do you think feasible is the right word? Where is that? On the last page under 5686, curb cuts and driveways. I think you might be able to say something like um, the board, or do we say the board, the commission? Do we say the, the special permit granting authority? Whatever the entity or the site plan review could consider alternate access points. You know, again, if um, if deemed beneficial to the. To the Project or minimal, the minimal, site. minimal impact. What if we say where feasible the site plan should consider alternative access points? Um, may consider. May Not consider. Should. Well, like the where feasible is kind of the out clause, right? Yeah. I guess yeah. I, <clears throat> what I want to do is make it so that it's not that they're considering alternate points, it's that we may consider accepting an alternate. Right, okay. Entry point. If they can prove to us that it's feasible, of minimal impact, it's safe, uh, that it benefits the project somehow. Yeah, see, I feel like the path of least resistance is using existing curb cuts on Main Street, right? So I'm, I'm trying to word it in a way that's like stronger to get people to think about alternate access points like from side street. So you think they'll be opposed to it if they actually have access from the side? You think they'd be opposed to it? I think they'd be dying for it. But like both, maybe they would use both. Yeah, and maybe both. that's okay. Again, yeah. this is a good example. That right. property owns that house on Hopkins. Right. Right. So they have an access point yeah. on Hopkins Street. You know? But maybe there's a better way to do it than everybody just coming in and out of. You separate residential from commercial, that's usually safer. Unless it res results in like a lot more pavement that you don't need. Uh, potentially, but you know, those buildings would be safer because the firefighters would have access all around them. Um, you know, obviously yeah. if, it's a, if it's a hundred unit development, you probably don't want all those cars coming out on some side street. But 10 units? You're talking about 15 cars, you know, morning and evening. And I'm guessing the sweet spot is actually nine units. I think it's nine, <laughs> nine units. You're right. So it's nine units, 21 cars. That's the yeah. fear, but I, I have heard that um, like really nine units is not enough to make a project feasible, especially <clears> with <throat> the 20, like especially with the commercial component requirement mm -hmm. that we have. So I'm not super worried. As long as it's more than 10. Yeah. I mean, yeah, 19 is like. 19, you get one unit. Yeah. Get two units. Um, it's supposed to be 10% and fractional numbers round up. So, okay. yeah. Good. <laughs> so anything above 10 units, 10 and above, so we'll get something. Becomes the price point. Yeah, okay. not, not many of the properties have side streets. Right. right. Mm -hmm. So should I say. Sure. Um, where feasible, the site plan may consider alternative access points from side streets. Is that good enough? Provided something. Provided it's... It at all? Well, if it's where feasible. That's enough, okay. How about where feasible, the residential access? No, I think we could open it. There might be a condition where there's, it just really works better to get even a commercial entrance okay. off of it. Or an exit, you know, or something that, that makes it safer, easier, better. You know, I was trying to kind of split it between Julie's wanting to kind of get them to do it on the side street and, mm -hmm. and the other one saying, no, please don't put up too much traffic because most of the side streets are residential. That's true, but um, what's the street next to Santander? Norwood? Yeah. Right, there isn't a residence immediately on that corner no. for quite a ways. And so... You know, maybe that's a better way to do that one. Right. Again, I'm not going to try to figure out every single site right, right. now. Just. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Um, okay. Great. And then 
no changes to intensity regulations or any questions about that? I have um, a question later on, but basically how um, the beginning of 6.0 applies to A and R's. <clears throat> Well, ANRs offer plan protection for a period of three years from zoning changes. Um, but what's your specific? Well, it says um, it, what we were told last oh, time is yeah, that we're not right. allowed to. Well, so no, it says here unless granted the proper relief, right? And 81L, which is the one that I think you're referring to, the one where it was two non-conforming lots already, and they just adjusted the lot line. It'd be almost any A and R. If any um, any A and R where the lots are no longer so uh, actually I'm thinking about the other one where they were separating it out so they in the future be able to build a third lot. I forget which one that was. Fifteen oh three Main Street. Yeah, might be Main Street. I think that it's was a only big two. lot, but it's wetland. But it's big. Yeah. So they were dividing it up so they could make another buildable lot out of it. I want to see in the future. It's fine. I'm still trying to understand what your issue is here. What am I not seeing? It says no existing lot building or structure shall be made more non, non become more non-conforming with the dimensional regulations of the zoning bylaw. Unless granted the proper relief. So That's an A&R would be the proper relief. Right. So well, an, and an A&R is not a statement that it complies with zoning. It's a right. statement that it's. You're not, it's not changing frontage, right? So in, if it's already non-conforming and has non-conforming frontage, but they adjust the lot line at the top, kind of like that one we saw, you know, doesn't impact frontage, you know, a, the ANR uh, handbook and rules are that thick, they're I interesting. Guess. <laughs> and there's, yeah, there's a lot of case law about ANRs, yeah. but um, so. generally speaking, you can't make something more non-conforming without the proper relief. So t that being said, Tony, town council still has to review these. Okay. So, like, if that language is not, if there needs to be some additional language or whatever, or it'll get added. Okay. And it'll get lawyered. <laughs> um, that sounded so bad, doesn't it? <laughs> it will get lawyered. <laughs> All right. Great. Should we talk about footnote one? Step one, footnote one is removed for business A. That's correct. So that's, that's step the, one. That's nice yeah. and clean. Um, and then step two is um, hold on, sorry. Oh, I'm um, yeah. Sorry, in table 532, this first step is that we actually moved the footnote mm -hmm. um, to where it should be. Um, and then I provided uh, in an email Andrew sent me, he summarized feedback from the zoning board about this. Um, Their first um, comment was that since we can know when additions were put onto buildings, should we subtract out any additions that came after 1942 when we're looking at this? Um, I think staff feel that's just adding complexity and that we already have a date for which the building is frozen in time, right? So January 1st, 2020 is the date in this bylaw where it's like, what is existing at that time? If you qualify for this footnote, whatever your house looks like at, on January 1st, 2020 is 
is your jumping off point. Mm -hmm. As I think it could be quite complicated for a building inspector to go back and parse out every single addition in the square footage right. um, yeah. from you know the last 80 years. That's it. You'll start seeing people claim more square footage. So those basements and rooms that they they have that weren't permitted. I come on board. Right, and then that's a whole nother like mm -hmm. can of worms and digging through files and Yeah. No, mm -hmm. I like it. Um, thousand square feet or one third diverse floor area. Yeah, I think once we started talking about it like an accessory apartment, it, it made a lot of sense. Right. So that's another point, actually, that the, um, because we met with town council about this and we met with the chair of the zoning board and then the zoning board talked about it as a whole. Um, and they were wondering if it might not be good to have some parameters to go by, similar to what they have for accessory apartment, um, which gets at their third comment on here about standards on means of egress and um, Design for maintaining a single the single family character. They do you find trouble maintaining single family character? Uh, is this just miswritten? Maintaining single family use is a bit subjective. I think you meant character. Yeah, character, right? Yeah. Character, right? Yes. yeah. Because yeah, two family conversion is it's nearly impossible. Right. Um, you know it when you see it. It's it's not difficult to do, right? Houses can ramble, right? Especially old houses. You know, they look they're great additions. Just kind of keep happening, and and you don't you look at them and you realize there's all these parts, and but somehow they're cohesive enough. I mean, a good architect can do that. I don't know if I could, but a good residential architect can do that stuff. I mean, we couldn't. We talked about this a lot last time, like whether we try to line it up with the provisions, the performance standards of accessory apartment or just or not. And you guys came down on like keeping it simple, leaving those out of it. So the people we're trying to appease here though is the Board of Appeals with those standards. They they want their checklist so they can work their way down it. Right. And I guess there's some value in that. We were trying to keep it simple and flexible. Uh, they're the ones who have to approve it, right? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, they could, in an informal way, decide which aspects of that <coughs> checklist they want to use. You yes. know? Right. Because um, not all of those standards do apply to this. And right. I think that's what I was trying is to say. Is there something that, that prevents them from doing that? No. No. The, uh, the, the tricky thing there, though, is that Applicants don't always know that up front, and then if they're not consistent about it, Ooh. the zoning board, like if the zoning board's not consistent about well, that. You know, I was at a, a hearing and I opposed to something, and I brought up that they had opposed a decision just around the corner from some place, and they said they look at every case individually. Right, and I mean, that's Perfect. true, right? Every case on its own merits, every lot's different, every structure is right. different. And so there is the that component of, of zoning. We right, always so say there's really no precedent. No precedent. The only consistency is that it's not consistent, I guess. It's legal or whatever. It's that I'm thoughtful. But, the, but going through, consistently going through the same checklist and deciding which things apply to that which case and there could be some consistency baked into their process. I don't have a problem with them using that criteria. Right. But if we formalize it, yeah. we can really look at it to make sure it's applicable. Right, and a lot of them aren't or would need right. to be reworded. And so that's right. like something we decided last time we weren't going to do. Um, and, but, you know, maybe what we do now is leave this the way it is. I know the zoning board has issues with the accessory apartment 
language mm -hmm. in some areas, and so maybe we revisit them both in a year or so. Okay. Um, at the same time, after they've seen how it plays out. Yeah, they felt that some of the criteria was vague, but that, that it was all waivable. Right. Um, so town council had a question about the last paragraph. Um, and I think Nancy Toomey had a similar question. Um, so after the structure is converted to a two-family under this footnote, any future additions to the structure will require a new special permit from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, so the Zoning Board Chair, Town Council, and Nancy Toomey were all talking about, like, is there an ultimate cap? Like, could they just get one special permit after another, after another, after another, or is there going to be, like, a a cap and then what if the first time when they do the conversion they don't max out the square footage that they get that they're, that they're allowed at that time then can they do the rest like without a special permit um, I would say once you've got a special permit any changes require a special permit right but, and so whether or not you get your full allowable square footage the first time mm -hmm. is... And it's going to be, most people will get their full allowable square footage. They're turning it into a two family. <coughs> right. I agree. I and agree. No way a developer is going to leave square footage on the Right. And that's, that was kind of my, my opinion when we met as well. So they've, they've um, built it to what's allowed for this first go. And you're saying they could come back then and use that as the basis for some additional... No, well, what we're, what we're wondering is if they build it on the first go, if they max out what they're allowed, is, are they done? Or could they, could they come back and add a mudroom, get a special permit to add a mudroom? Add room on to each of yeah, the Yeah, keep unit. adding right. on. Like, the limitation is 25% coverage. That's what I said. Right, they're too. limited yeah. and setbacks. So, like, any right. setbacks right. they right. violate would Parking. be variances. And but at that point, you're, whether it's a variance or a special permit, in my mind, they're technically the same thing. You're going before the ZBA. You're filling out all the forms. There's a subtle difference in that. A variance lasts forever, and a special permit lasts for the life of the building. also has specific cr criteria. Yeah, you need to the meet. variance yeah. thresholds are higher. Yeah. Yeah. They should be, in theory, harder to meet. They are. And let's say there was a condition where the lot was large enough where they could add I don't know, a bigger garage or some something outboard, but still be well within the setbacks and under the lot coverage. That's probably appropriate or right. okay, maybe. So we'd allow it by yeah, right. not adding a third unit. Gives it. They're not adding a third unit. If you're doing that, you might as well just no, give can't. them the space at the beginning. But you can't no, add a third no, unit. No, that's no, no, they're not adding a third right. unit. Saying, <laughs> okay. Right. So yeah. it's not it's not something that's well beyond this. You, you're saying give them it. But we don't know what that is. So we've established this as a this is a small increase in square footage. It's the equivalent to an accessory apartment, which usually doesn't have impact on a residential structure in a residential neighborhood. It's minimal impact. Right. The the problem is it's gonna be exactly what people have been trying to do with this to begin with. Their developers have come in and say, well, I can put up a two-family, I can convert it. So let me convert it, I'll tear it down, I have a right to a two-family, I'll build a brand new two-family, no. and everything's good. Let me skip the middle step. I thought they couldn't do that. They can't. Okay. But that was what they were proposing. So now what they're going to propose is, okay, I'm going to convert it to a two-family, and then they're going to come back a year later and say, well, now I'd like to expand it. But that's if there's room. If there's room. Well... Like two points about that though the special permit process might have a little bit of a chilling effect like a lot of the developers that we deal with just like they, they like this because it's by right right now mm -hmm. and you know if they can get where they need to be with our building commissioners like they get a building permit so there's the you know a path of least resistance thing going on and then the second thing is even though we have limits we have setbacks and we have lot coverage there always is the possibility to get a special permit or a variance to exceed those right, right. so there's no real limit necessarily, unless we yeah. say one, I think. So really, if I was a developer and I wanted to, what I would do is I would go for the special permit and a variance at the same I would want a variance from the size limitation of 1,000 square feet or one third. 
can't get that. They wouldn't get that. There's no justification for it. Right. right. At that time, there would be no justification. Um, uh, by right. Um, the zoning board has seen that they go for a special permit or a variance for a bigger structure. And they mm -hmm. say, no, why would we give you the variance when you can get the special permit for virtually the same concept? Yeah. So I don't know how it would be done, but I would say that if they wanted to come back and make it bigger, add on to it, then at that point they're going to need a variance because they are going to have to exceed the thousand square feet or the one third addition from the original. So this should we say any future additions to the structure will require a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals? Can you say that? Yeah, I mean like technically. So that's like SPA? Um, how do you say that? I mean we don't say that for example. Yeah we don't say it for anything. anything we would just say no. Right. right, it would. Mm -hmm. We would say no, and then they right. want to do it. They get a variance, right? Right, right. So that's what you do. Say no. Yeah. Let them go get a variance. Okay, so basically, then we would change this wording to right. after a structure is converted to a two-family under this footnote, no future additions to the structure will be allowed. Correct. Yeah, that works for me. And then if they want one, they get a variance. They're going to have to get a variance. Right. And it's, the ZBA will have already seen this under the first permit. Yeah. And that'll actually give the, uh, the applicant a sense of where it's going to go. So if they're like resisting just about everything they're doing for their first application, they're likely not going to get a variance to make it even bigger. Unless they wait long enough, I'm, but at that point they've sold the units. Yeah, I don't know. Turn it right. over, but that could happen anywhere. I mean, almost any property could get a variance for a garage or. Like if you just make the right case, you know, if you can meet the thresholds and make the case. I just feel like if they didn't convert it to a two-family, they could do everything we're talking about by right. That's so right. why are we going to stop them because it's converted to a two-family? And that's why you stop them, because they converted it to a two-family. Right. They chose that path, and right. so right. that path has a limit to it. Right. Just put them right. Okay. Yeah. So we don't have these, like, blob structures that just get added. And, yeah. Um, right, because I, I do think that we would end up in a similar scenario to what we're dealing with now, where it's just, like, how far can they push it? Right. How much can they add? And, so read that back to me, where are we, where do we... Okay, so what we ended up with here is after a structure is converted to a two-family under this footnote, no future additions to the structure will be allowed. And then it could, it, the last sentence at such time that the original start, you know, dot, dot, dot. Like that. Okay. okay, great. So, um, the goal for tonight was to um, close the hearing on these and so that I can send them to town council for review before the select board meeting later this month. Um, do you guys feel comfortable? Yeah, I know the other people aren't here, but. We need to move it along. I think everybody's yeah. seen this. We haven't made any changes that are significant. Except for that one. Well, but I think but that that's something everybody's probably on board with. We were struggling with how big to make it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And if they object to it, they can voice their concern at town meeting. But we need to get this into the town council's hands so you guys can have them. They might blow this whole thing up. <laughs> well, footnote one, town council's already reviewed. So that one shouldn't get too blown up. I think I actually sent them the other ones too okay. a while back. I didn't see a lot in the other one that they could object to, right? Just creating another option. They might just like legalize all of them and make it like yeah. harder to follow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bouncing ball, yeah, legalese. You gotta charge you for something. <laughs> um, okay, so we should close the public hearing? Is this all one? There are two, I believe. Okay. Right. Yes.
Uh, no, one, and then mixed use, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. Motion to close the public hearing for footnote one. Second. All in favor? Okay. And after you do these motions, we'll want motions to recommend to town meeting. Okay. Um, motion to close the public hearing for mixed use regulations, sections two, five, and six. Second. All in favor? Are you ready for more motions? Mm -hmm. Motion to recommend uh, changes to footnote one to table 5.3.1 and 5.3.2 to um, select board for the warrant. Second. We're recommending to town meeting. Oh, to town meeting. Yeah. Sorry. It's okay. I, I amend my motion <laughs> <laughs> to recommend to town meeting footnote one changes for table 5.31 and 5.32. Second. All in favor? Uh, motion to recommend to town meeting mixed use regulations, sections 2, 5, and 6. Second. There were no changes, so that's seconded. And all in favor? All in favor. Great. Awesome. Progress. Yes, we made a lot of progress tonight. Indeed. It's almost better to have. <laughs> so, uh, straight line of process. I can never say that. Right. I like so, the other guys. How are we doing? Does anybody want a donut break? Yeah. Do you want to hit some of these minutes? You tell me. You guys have been here all day. Yes, um, please. Well, let's just, yeah, let's, let's just keep going, right? right? And if you guys don't mind. No. Um, Trace them back. Yeah, sure, why not? Your trusty notebook. <laughs> you can dig up some recent baby. I'm going to get some. I'm going to get a donut. I can show you pictures of my chimney suspended. It's not even that struggle. I've seen that before. Not yours, but it's been done. Was it <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. I had it all spilled in my basement. 230 gallons. Oh, no. The uh, furnace was being maintained. The guy improperly installed the gasket flange, whatever that comes from my fuel tank, into my furnace, and I had 230 gallons or so, we're not sure exactly, go permeate the cement and down through uh, 200 years worth of rocks that were down there. Wow. And they've excavated. Can you smell it still? No. It's all, we've just finished, tomorrow they do one more process of, of what they call vectoring. <laughs> It's a huge machine the size of a cement truck that sucks out soil and yeah, gravel and all of that. Oh, they're but actually taking everything out. They're, they're taking everything out and then piles and piles of rocks, which they're also removing because now they're replacing the rock with cement. And they've had to put up wow. all the columns. I have a three-story house. This whole thing has been cribbed and suspended, and they have uh, laser beams pointed to make sure yeah, nothing yeah, shifts. Nice. Oh my goodness. It's not fun. It's one with bacon and maple. No, I Why wouldn't you make that? It's like the best one in the box. And these are gluten free because Dean remembered that some of them to be gluten free. Where are the, where's, it's Cane's? Mm -hmm. yeah. Where are they located? The original is Sagas. Oh, well. And they're opening they have another one, one in Faneuil Hall, I believe. Mm -hmm. One in downtown Boston somewhere. Yeah, something like that. And then now one on Route 1. New one. Yeah. It's a drive through I know, but I'm not going to drive to Saugus for a donut. I'm <laughs> telling you, though. Especially when you can get them free right here. Look at that donut, though. <laughs> You can let Jean know that I did hear the ad on BZ this way uh, tonight coming home. And there are chocolate ones for you, Tony. I had a chocolate one. You already <laughs> have one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like the first thing you did when you got here. <laughs> well, you know, you guys were late. You know, you're a little early. We weren't late. We were right on time. <laughs> you were later than me. Of course, I knew there were donuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's gluten free, free huh? Yeah. yeah. What are you? The small box is gluten free. I know. Small box is gluten free. 
Does it taste any different? Yeah, it is good. Mm -hmm. It's not like a brick or anything. It's too light. Mm. What, what do they use for gluten free rice? <laughs> I think I'm the opposite of gluten free. If I don't have enough gluten per day, I'm going to die. <laughs> gluten dependent? Same yes. <laughs> I grew up on bread, so. <laughs> bread. <laughs> and real pizza with a crust, a nice little dough. <laughs> Burnt on the bottom. <laughs> Oily. <laughs> Baked in like the same pan my mom's been using for <laughs> Yeah. Sabina and Italian name? Hmm? Sabina and Italian? I thought it was more like a Lebanese name. It's actually an Arabic word, but Sicilian. I mean, everything I kind of Sicilian. Sicilian. Yeah, yeah. Sicilian. Got it. Yeah, it means big boat or something or shit. Hmm. I'm Sicilian, but I don't look as much like it. <laughs> 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 yep. <laughs> I'm not a s single bit French, but my name is hmm. partly by marriage, partly by my parents. <laughs> hmm. So how are we doing on the minutes, guys? <laughs> I'm off to page four. I'm reading, I'm reading. <laughs> Have another donut. Then, um, Janet, but the woman who was with the Farrells didn't sign right. it, and then that guy in the back, he right. said his name, but I think it was like Kevin something. No, I didn't write his name. He said Kevin. I think. Hmm. Page three, there's no way I said cookie cutter, but it's in quotes. Not only did you say it, you have record of you saying it, I'll say that. and yeah, it's in quotes. So. I mean, Kim goes by the tape pretty closely. Really? So you probably did say it. <laughs> mm, I don't think so. <laughs> What's going on with Dollar Tree, by the way? Yeah, uh, uh, we can talk about that after. What happened with the uh, lighting on top of Burger King? They got that lit band on their coping. No. It was not on their site plan review. No. Not on the drawings. Right. I thought they. Was that the building that they asked for it, and you guys were like, "No way." No, that. No, that was Walker's Brook Drive. Walkers. Yeah, and and then the one down at Fifty Guys Walk, walk Fifty Guys Walkers, but they wanted one of those. Um, I don't know what they called them. Accent lighting. <laughs> Neon? Yeah, but it was like a, they have a, ter a term for it. I'm remembering. And you guys are like, no way. <sighs> and about 55? That task building? Hmm. Remember they came in for a master signage plan a couple of years ago and Tony was like, but you can't actually have one because you weren't developed under PUDI. So I was at that ZBE hearing, by the way. By accident, I think. 
Yeah. That was the I Burger was there, King uh, one. I was there for the Burger King one, but the Walkersburg Drive new tenants. Uh, well, what's Weston Samson. Yeah. They were told by the rental agent or the landlord that they could have all these signs that mm. they knew when they came into the meeting before that that they couldn't have. And then they sold the building and walked away. And technically, they were not developed on the PUDI, which is why they weren't allowed everything right. that they wanted. You were to correct. You were absolutely correct. We looked into it. The advantage of living there for so long. <laughs> it's good someone's checking. <laughs> and attending every single meeting for everything. <laughs>
Page seven at the bottom, second paragraph. This Laura Ryan, second sentence. Mm -hmm. Concerned there is standing water on our property that causes mold where grass should grow. It's probably moss. Yes. Yes. Yeah. CPDC approved the minutes of May 13, 2019, as amended. Second. All in favor? Second. One more. It was the 10th, June 10th, and July 8th. Julie, has uh, the Met at Reading Station come back to us with any changes for signage? Not yet? They're, they need to go to the zoning board for the variance for their sign. They haven't applied yet though, right? Not complete application. Yeah. We gave them approval for their two awnings. Um, and that was it. Mm -hmm. And then once they get their variance, they'll come back to us. I don't believe so. Business B signs need a certificate of appropriateness. I believe John said that if they get a variance from the zoning board that they don't need to appear before this board again. But it's in the minutes. They may have to. Do that. 
That's what I was just reading. Okay. Is that what the outcome was? They asked us to approve it so that if they got a variance, they could just do it. But we didn't do that. Well, I don't think we approve. did that. Yeah. Yeah, approve that. Mm, we didn't. <laughs> Said, but if they have to, then they have to. I don't know what we would do in that case. Joint meeting. Mm. Tony and Nick thought they would need to come back. John thought they don't. <laughs> Did we approve the candidate? Yeah. 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 Well, technically, when they go to the ZBA, if they get a variance for the appropriate certificate of appropriateness, then they don't have to come back. It's not a, well, I don't think it's a variance for the certificate of appropriateness. It's just a variance for the height. For a sign above that second height, floor. And they would have to come in with the design. With the right. design. So they'd get a variance to go up to a specific height, right? And then they'd come before you, probably at that height, and you can say, no, you can well, go lower, right? You can go to that height or so lower. I was asking yeah. what the end run was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's what the variance is for the height. And yeah. then you can decide the location and right. the design. Right. And it just can't exceed that given right. height. Yeah. That whole project. Yeah. Mm. Any, any way they can break, bend, that's it, don't just it. warp? It's just <laughs> funny that their, their argument is always still the same. It's good. For <laughs> With everything, it was well, I, it, but the next thing would have been flashing neon. <laughs> It'll only be on when there's a train stop. <laughs> Nobody on the train can see it. The whole the train drives silently. Like, mm -hmm. No one stops. <laughs> so that you're afraid to get out because it's like some horror movie. It goes down. Went it from uh, Bates Motel. Mm. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Page four, top of page four, it says the proposal includes bleachers, dugouts, bullpens, restrooms. Didn't we just? Well, yeah, we just right. we should no cross restrooms. that out. Yeah. I was thinking that when Tony asked that, I was like, I thought the minutes said. Hmm.
Is this a condition? Or is this a misstatement of something? Misstatement. It's a misstatement. There was no condition no. added about that. Spelling of discuss on um, discus. Oh, a discus cage. Discuss. Holds a discuss. Page five, Mr. Steve Marlisso. The end of the line, athletic trainer by profession is misspelled. Oh yeah, yep. it's missing an S. Thank you. I just think it's a funny description. It <laughs> was on the other side of the tracks. <laughs> Page six, second bullet from the bottom. Now it talks about proposed restrooms. Yeah, we notice that again. I'm going to clarify tomorrow with the applicant. Yeah. Tony, what was your question? You asked about the restrooms. Did you have a follow up question you were going to ask if they said yes? No, I just wanted the clarification. Well, okay. right. If they said yes, I was going to ask where they are. Right. Yeah. Okay. Where's the plan? All right. Because um, we've taken it off from the very top to, of page four, yeah. right. Right. and here it is. Right. Yeah. They, they, mu they, they must have, have said been, it. You know, they must have said it. must have been on the original plan. Yeah. I want to say that um, the proposal tonight said that 
water and electricity would be provided by the town. There was no reference to sewer. So maybe they originally had it in the plan and right. then took it out. Right. Realized yeah. they couldn't run it anywhere. Plus they built a septic field. Mm -hmm. Oh, we just have porta potties like every other facility. Mm -hmm. Good with six ten. Yeah. We just have to yep. follow up on the restrooms. So uh, move that the CPDC approve the meeting minutes from June tenth, two thousand nineteen, as amended. Second. After you, please. Second. One favor. Guys, finally, I mean, it's been hanging over us here.
page three. Especially when it's part of a subdivision. Page three yep. to second bullet. Original design was zero foot candles. That would be very dark. So I think that just means spillover or beyond the lot line, right? What? Second, second bullet, bullet page second three. bullet on page three just the says top. original design was zero foot candles. Mm -hmm. that doesn't make sense. So if it's zero foot candles, then zero foot candles at the property line. That is true. Maybe the original design was aiming for a zero yeah, foot candles. Design goal. Original design, design goal, goal. Zero foot candles at the property line. Okay. I have an email from you. Yeah, but think about this. It's part of a subdivision for which we are saying you don't have to design a road to town standards. A road designed to town standards would meet access requirements and load bearing requirements for emergency services. But that doesn't mean we're waiving all access requirements and all safety standards. Like, they're getting permission to design a driveway that has to be stabilized to support a fire truck. Right. Like, it's not just a single family structure, is my point. Mm -hmm. It's part of the bigger process. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, are they going into, like, you know, your next door neighbor, single family Joe, and requiring you to, like, Mine force them to right. sprinkle. They have no. Uh, they have no authority in those circumstances. But this is part of a subdivision process, so they absolutely have authority. You know, the whole reason, one of the main reasons you have subdivision control is for emergency services and utilities and access. You know, you're designing right. the road. For I think they can say we need to get there, but they can't say you have to sprinkle it or it has to be. But they have many times in the past, especially in these two roads roads sprinkled in out of courtesy. Because it was such a long driveway. Right. Mm -hmm. Because but the fire department couldn't force them to do that. When the driveway is longer than the road, it's not. Well, that's some sort of provision. Yeah. Mm hmm. Or when it's longer than the hose can reach right. from the nearest fire hydrant. Mm -hmm. Maybe they don't have like, an actual provision to hang their hat on. But right. through this process, they have jurisdiction. Okay. Page four. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Right. One, two, third paragraph. It's like the fourth sentence says, Mrs. Fina said he had no problem with the school use. His concern is the private entity should, it's probably private entity use. Yeah. It's a private rental use. Mm -hmm. Where is it? H44. I just also think it's like not a necessary comment because they're going to comply anyway. Right. Mostly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, we can't do anything. We right. can't. Yeah. So, um, first bullet under the paragraph beginning Mr. Steve Chapman mm -hmm. from 66, it, um, it's kind of incorrectly worded. It's, it currently states the drainage calculations have the wrong town. It should be the drainage calculations presented were for the wrong town or no, for a different they, town. They were just mislabeled. Yeah. 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 The calcs, the okay. Fact, they didn't change the label on them. Okay. Right. So then that's what we should the drainage Just calculations were mislabeled with the wrong name. Yeah. Wrong team name. Okay. Good. Thank you. See, I think it's interesting because 
Maybe the NSA so the interpretation has changed. Like, usually, mm -hmm. especially when you have an extra long drive. Right. That said, can we move the T turn further from the house's board? I think mm -hmm. that said that, and the applicants really? did it anyways. For the truck to be able to make yeah, that turn. Yeah, and I think with it being in the middle of the driveway, it could reach the door. Right. Like right. Or your regular single family house wouldn't come to CBDC for any reason. Right. It wouldn't. Right. Maybe the driveway permit from right. engineering if they're doing a new driveway right. or something. But like, you know, the roads that are 12 feet wide, mm -hmm. they don't have to be. Because it's not. The fire truck can pull up on the street. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It's the length of the driveway that right. it triggers some kind of fire. Mm -hmm. They don't have a good access. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, those hoses are like a thousand feet, maybe. Right. Is that a fire hose? I just think it's interesting because it's, it's not like something that Josh would say either. Right. It's not though. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, they had a lot to say on the one that was a PRD on Van Norden. That was before my time. And then did a similar one on Van Norden. And then there's this one, and then there's Grove Street. They had a lot to say. Yeah, they had. I don't know. Page seven, bottom paragraph. Second sentence, would the building that face Main Street be all commercial and the one be allowed to be residential? Question mark. Where? Uh, Miss Mercier questioned. Mm -hmm. The first sentence. First sentence, bottom paragraph. Fourth word in on third line. I know, I don't like to have question marks in the yeah. minutes, but, um. Uh, question. I want one there. Okay. <laughs> That's easier than you were <coughs> Do that. Please resistance. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's not my writing style. I would change all of it. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> would you? Yep. I think our minutes taker does a very nice job. Does a good job of recording everything. I agree, but that doesn't mean that's we don't need do everything. So, yeah, we don't need. It. it could be written less. Some of the stuff isn't resolved. Right. Right. So the discussion gets to a point and it sort of stops there. So there's no resolution to it. Yeah. But do you, but if she's not going to add a resolution, if there isn't one. No, but um, yeah. you know. Some of the back and forth could be some. Mr. McNichol says this, and Mrs. Fan says that. Right. Yeah. And it stops. Right. So where did it go? <laughs> yeah, I think some of the back and forth could be minimized, but. Or it should be written like a script. These are very transcripty. And should line numbers. Line, please. <laughs> well, because you're still working off, you know, 19th century rules for record keeping when we could actually have the video of the night transcribed automatically and saved as, as the notes. 
but that would require changes to Mass Law. It's very expensive as well. What do you mean it's very expensive? You can't just run that through like a Dragon software? I don't know. I think I've been, I've been told the software for transcription is quite costly. Like some official one that you have to, to have? Do it, yeah. Hiring somebody to do it would be costly. Running yeah. it through Google Translate or whatever. But Google Translate is crap. I don't know. It works out pretty well on TVs. Is that what they do on TV? Go to a different, oh, yeah. go to a different well, language first and then bring it back to English. <laughs> there's two ways. Number one is they can actually take the script and you can see those. Mm -hmm. Because what the actor is saying on screen is not what's being presented. And then, for example, a newscast, they have real time. That's being run through software that's taking what they're saying and changing it, just converting it. I always thought it was some intern making all those spelling errors. It's typing really quickly. Sometimes they're like, there's a huge lag sometimes. Yeah. And then sometimes, I mean, there's so many errors in those. I would never want that for this. Yeah, the YouTube closed captions are not good for these meetings at all. They are awful. Have you tried? Mm hmm. Really? Mm hmm. I mean, because, like, we all mumble, especially <laughs> Nick. That's intentional. <laughs> His goal is to force people to pay attention to him. Or to not have a written record of what I've said. <laughs> I can't be held to it. It changes my mind. Like your cookie cutter quote. <laughs> but I want to see if the minutes next, the next meeting have how many times I said stupid at the beginning of this. <laughs> Challenge accepted. It's like four. So at least four. I think it was four. Yes, but those you didn't four, say yeah. quietly. No. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's chunky. Because the building behind horrible. Well, they could have made full use of the awning. Yeah. Well, I know we can't be their designers. The last six built businesses that had beautiful signs in that location went out of business. That Chinese restaurant was there for quite some time. Yeah, it was. What's that? Three years. Yeah, three years? No. Well, it changed names, but it was there. For <laughs> it changed while. names, it changed owners. No, but it, as a business, it was there. No, a business was there. The business changed. Where it was bought. Where it was bought. The business maybe didn't change. Usually, if you buy a business, you don't change the name. You get the well, success. Unless the business isn't doing well and doesn't have good name recognition. Which is why it gets sold, so. <laughs> I'm a bit tired. You don't open up a business and retire in three years unless you're really successful, in which case you don't change the name. You open up a biotech and have it get bought by a bigger company in three years, and then you could probably just unless retire. Yeah. If we get biotech in this city, I'd be happy. <laughs> we'll work on that. We'll talk about that. <laughs> we didn't raise the issue about the scoreboard with all signage, did we? Scoreboard? Scoreboard. Scoreboard has a place place advertisement here clearly on their scoreboard. I don't care. It's not visible from the street. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. My only concern is, you know, cluttering the main street or downtown. Okay. Can you see it from the train? Yeah, I don't think so. I think there's a ranch that will be blocking the train. <laughs> okay, on 7 8. Anybody else changes? No, I'm all set. Okay. I get distracted. You're permitted. See, that's the one thing I do keep to look, look at is the minutes. Yeah, they're all online. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't get anything this weekend, but I like to read them online because I can make my edits right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If he said that, I'm just thinking. Nothing. Okay. Is there a reason why on the 7-8 plans we refer to the approval not required twice on pages 9 and... Oh, did I not delete it out of the back end? No. 
on page two? I put it up front because um, that's what had happened. And Rachel voted and then she left. So. Okay. But then it's at the back as well? Yes. Page nine. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that whole section should be taken out because it's at yeah, the beginning yeah. already. Yeah. Okay, now I'm done. I have to delete it. Welcome to accept the minutes from July 8th, 2019, as amended. Second. All in favor? Thanks, guys. Anything else you need? Are there any uh, planning updates for the town? Yes, you be aware of? something about the dollar store you're going to. Oh, it's the, here. the dollar store continues to have challenges with their circulation and loading plan and their truck turning movements that we are, um, you know, discussing with them. Was that? I think it's like a 33 foot long truck they want to yeah, bring in multiple times a week. Not, the loading area deliveries. at the back of the building is not not conducive. It takes two hours, and and so you know we know Walgreens used to get deliveries, and and we didn't have major problems. So we're trying to work with them to figure out a better plan. Hmm. That's that's that. But they knew that going in. Right. Smaller trucks. Yeah, maybe. But that might mean more frequent deliveries. I mean, that, I don't know. Have you heard anything more recent than that? That was it. We had a phone call two or three weeks ago, and yeah. I haven't heard that since. So. Okay. Uh, nothing else? Motion? Mm -hmm. um, no. Actually, one more thing. I just thought of, sorry, it's not that like critical, but I wanted to get your um, input on um, starting a conversation on zoning for next year at our next meeting. Um, and I was thinking I might it might be a nice opportunity for us to introduce our new economic development director to you guys, Erin um, Schieffer. She joined our little planning economic development mm -hmm. team in June. I was thinking she might be able to come, you could meet her, and then we are looking at the table of uses and some ways we can modernize it and add some different uses into it that would bring us more in line with like some current trends and, you know, like life sciences, biotechs, um, breweries. breweries. And there was another that I had on the list today, oh, like short-term rentals. I mean, these are it's, they're much bigger conversations. Um, but we want to start looking at that <coughs> and see if we can come up with some proposals for what can be done there. Okay. Like tiny houses. That's and trending too. Tiny houses, yeah. Um, that's my list. If um, we don't end up with a packed agenda, we might because some of these things that have been continuing for a while might come back next time. But so I would say like it'll be tentative depending on how the agenda is playing out. Okay. And the meeting's on mm -hmm. September 9th, your next meeting. Okay. September 9th. Okay. Yeah, we don't need the extra meeting. Look at design guidelines oh, as that's well. that's right. Take that yeah. back up. And to put that back on the agenda as well. So that a lot that depends wrapped. on like how many actual applications we have that night. Um, but those are two things that I have on as placeholders on the agenda for next time. Sound good? Mm -hmm. All right. Plan. Great. Thank you. So we don't have an August 21 meeting? No. no. So um, Deleted thank you guys for getting back to me so quickly. I don't think we need. No, but we intended to put them in the schedule if we didn't wrap up the zoning um, issues today. Yeah. I was going to. <coughs> that was going to be our tentative date, probably. Um, but we don't need it. No. It's all good. Okay. So. Great. Great. Mm -hmm. Oh, motion to dismiss. Second. No, motion no. to adjourn. Adjourn. <laughs> Green school. Yes. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor?